Previously on Eric the Car Guy. I think this is right and this is left. I think. It will not. Jeez, oh, freaking Fruit Loops. Check out the action on today's Eric the Car Guy video. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this hole's not big enough or what? So exciting. That wasn't necessarily too long. Doo -doo. You ready to die? Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, and welcome back to the Integra Type R restoration that I'm almost finished with. In fact, by the end of this video, this should be running and driving, and well, don't miss it. So be sure to watch the whole video. A lot has happened since I saw you last. I replaced the driver's side window sill molding. I also replaced the driver's side window run channel, which had a little bit of damage to it. I replaced the driver's side door handle, which was broken. Got a new door handle. I sent that off to the body shop along with the front bumper. They painted it, I installed it, it works great. Also on the passenger side, the door molding on that side was also cheesed up, that got replaced. I spent a lot of time putting the rear of the vehicle back together with the new parts from the parts car. These rear panels aren't perfect, but they're way better than the broken ones I had in there to begin with. I also plan to change out the carpet later today. My son is bringing the GSR. We're going to swap those out. So this should have as good a carpet as it can have. As long as we're back here in the hatch, the other thing that I did was thanks to Helix Automotive, they sent me a rear seal for the entire hatch. So the entire hatch seal is brand new. And let's not forget, I painted the support bar in the back, which is kind of all scratched and nicked up and it looks a lot better now. I reassembled the rear suspension, save the end links, which I'm going to install today. All the rear suspension is complete and intact and ready to go. I believe we got the K member in last time, but we didn't assemble the front suspension, which I did off camera. I put the lower control arms back in, I reassembled the axles, the spindles, the front brakes, and the upper control arms on this are also the same K-tune type units as in the back and have a camber adjustment, so I'll be able to adjust the camber in the front as well as the back. And while I was under there, I took the opportunity to reinstall the exhaust. In fact, I could start the engine up and run it right now. I was also able to use some special techniques to torque all the fasteners that you normally torque when a vehicle is on the ground. And as we go through today's video, I'm gonna show you how I did that in the front uh, so that you may do it yourself. So it's kind of hard to get underneath these really low cars when they're on the ground to torque everything. So I'm gonna show you how I did it and got away with it. Cameraman Brian and I bled the brakes this morning and that just leaves a short list of things for us to do today and get this thing running and driving again. I'm excited. I'm now going to reassemble these rear stabilizer links. They're a little weird looking on here and inside the stabilizer bar, there's a bushing um, that actually houses these little metal sleeves, which I need to put in. And then this bolt goes through the top part and then the bottom comes through here and there's openings inside the lower control arm. This is just exhausting. Doo -doo. Because this bolt goes through a bushing, anti-seize on the shank. Before I run this down, I'm gonna connect the other side to make sure that they're both connected. And that way when I run them down, I don't have to worry about fighting them the other side. We are done with the rear suspension. <sighs> I'm now gonna work on torquing and wrapping up the front suspension. And in order to do this, I wanna disconnect the stabilizer links. And the reason I wanna do that is because I'm gonna compress the suspension on each side individually. If the stabilizer bar is connected, what it will do is it'll try to equalize the uh, stress that I'm putting on one side to the other side. So in other words, I won't get an accurate compression of the suspension if I leave the stabilizer bar connected. With it disconnected, I'm gonna be able to do what I wanna do, reconnect it when I'm done. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna to torque all the fasteners that I would torque with the suspension under stress like it's on the ground. This is one of those uh, bushings that twists, so I wanna do it here. I left these loose in particular to do this. So I'm gonna tighten this up or just snug it up and get it to the point where I can torque it before uh, I jack up this side of the suspension and stress it. I don't think I'm ever getting a torque wrench on this, so I'll just have to estimate. All right. 
Here are the torque specs for the front suspension. Here are the torque specs for the rear suspension. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to lift this side of the suspension underneath this ball joint and I'm going to compress it to the point where I just see the car lift off of the jack stand like a millimeter. Then I know the weight of the vehicle is on the jack. If anything happens, it falls down on the jack stand. That's the important part. Don't jack it up, remove the jack stand, anything like that. Leave the jack stand there as a safety measure. But just get it up far enough to where it just starts to raise up off the jack stand. The suspension is compressed enough to tighten things. 61 foot pounds for the one on the rear lower control arm. I'm not getting any further under the vehicle than this. If I lose something, I lose an arm, not my life. But like I said before, I'm not gonna be able to get a torque wrench up in here. So I'm just gonna sort of guesstimate the 61 pound feet. That's good. Where the uh, front control arm attaches to the body in the front, looks like that's 47 pound feet. This way I remember what's torqued and what's tightened. I'm doing it more for that than anything else. Right here's the next one I'm gonna tighten. Looks like that one's also 47. I'm going to move this ball joint, I believe, all the way in. This is actually designed for lowered vehicles, so that would mean the adjustment is set to go out to uh, compensate for a lowered vehicle. Since I'm not really lowered, I'm gonna try to push it all the way in and see what that does. But first, I'm gonna tighten those attachments to the uh, body. There are six Allen head fasteners, three on each side, that hold this down. But it looks like it already slid all the way back in. So all I've got to do is snug it up. It looks like that's cambered in pretty good. I actually want to see if I can make that more level. Or if anything, I want the bubble to be slightly towards the outside, because right now it's cambered in a lot. Still where I wanted it. So I'm going to tighten the rest down. That should do it for now. And now we can let it down very slowly. Back on the jack stand, do the other side. There it is. Just barely. I can live with that. Now let's reconnect the stabilizer bar. Shiny new fasteners. Hey, I don't think I've ever seen with shiny new fasteners aside from one that was brand new. So this says that this vehicle has never been in a front end collision or if it was that this was replaced because this is the original equipment uh, absorber. I guess you'd call it, that goes underneath the bumper. And I didn't want to forget to put it on before I put the bumper on because that would suck. So I put it inside the bumper so I'd remember. Let's do that now. I'm keeping one thing from this car and that's the original front emblem. But I have a brand new one here, actual Acura part that I'm gonna install. So it'll be brand new for the new owner. I think the uh, body shop guy did a great job on this bumper. I think it looks fantastic. So this is affixed to the front bumper via two things. There's some adhesive on the back, and then these two guides here have some, uh, I don't know, kind of nuts, I guess you'd call them, that attach to the back of it after you install it. But first thing, I need to remove the adhesive. And in case you were wondering, no, these are not cheap. Seriously. Maybe there's a little paint in there. I'm gonna go in there by hand with a little drill bit and clean out these ends because I think it would go in there. The glory badge. People put these on their Civics and think they're faster. They're probably right. And I finished them off with an eight millimeter socket. The moment has arrived. Other side. 
done. And that, my friends, is the end of a very long road. But the new owner will be very happy with this car. I'm certain of it. I'm just snugging the wheels down. I'm not gonna torque them until it's on the ground. Ooh, remnants. I don't think I got my camber right. <laughs> It is cambered way out. I think I need to push those in or else it's going to be a squirrely drive. Here's a quick note on these upper control arms. After I pushed them all the way in to where they made contact with the coil springs and tightened them down, that seemed to put them bang on as far as the alignment, and here's the sheet to show it. So if you have these adjustable control arms, lift the wheel off the ground, push it all the way in, tighten things down, and you might be close. It feels so tight, snug. Oh, it feels so good. It feels taunt. Like a cat ready to pounce. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. VTEC just kicked in, yo. All the work, totally worth it. Totally worth it. All the pain, all the suffering, the rash, the itching, all of it. Worth it. Come on, Brian. You didn't even get it to VTEC. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Now shift it. There you go. <laughs> wow. Awesome does not even begin to describe it. I mean, all the work, totally worth it. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey. I've had a great time. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I will see you next time.